Hello, Chrissy here, and welcome to the attic. In my last video where I showed you my tablet um, case, I had a few comments of people asking if I could do a tutorial. I've never done a tutorial before, but um, I'm going to attempt one. And um, uh, I did briefly um, comment on the construction of the case, but I think what people um, may be meaning um, uh, is how do I achieve the tattered look so that's what I'm going to attempt to show you so I'll make a start on my tutorial um, this one is just going to end up any size because it's just utilizing the um, leftover pieces of fabric that I had so uh, whether it will actually fit an iPad or a tablet, I don't know, but it's just to really show you how to go about it. I mentioned I had four layers when you include the layers of collage lace, actually five layers of fabric. So I've started out here with um, what those layers are. This is, um, this was the lining this is the lining fabric here um, that I use and it's quite a heavy canvas heavier than the usual cotton that I would normally use on my journals and things so that's quite heavy um, a layer of batting this is um, iron-on batting fusible batting so I will iron that onto this piece of um, lining and then there's this which is another quite heavy piece because I wanted the protection for the um, screen of the eye uh, of the tablet um, I wanted it to be substantial so that was a piece that I've had forever and then um, as I do with my journals I then put a um, layer of like a, a net or a, this is curtain netting I think, I have dyed it, um, on the top. Sometimes um, I go for more of a, um, towards a brownie look, other times I'll go towards more of the avocado look, um, just depends what I've got what I want to use at the time so um, I'll stop um, for I think the moment. The key to this tattered style is don't try and be too perfect. As I say that's why it suits me. I don't do perfection so there um, we'll aim at that being the size of our um, pouch, wallet, bag, whatever you choose to call it. Now, um, then I decided what I wanted to do on the front. I have, I usually have on my desk a um, basket of just scraps that I throw everything into. I try and keep all my little bits and pieces of um, things because, as you will notice with my style, there's lots of little tiny snippets of um, things here and there. Not so much with this one but with a lot of my other things. So they just all go into here and then when I'm doing something like this I'll go through and just pull out the pieces that I think I might use in it. So um, I'll just make a pile of what I think could possibly be used in the collage. Okay, I've pulled so. out a few things here. Um, then I usually, I have, um, usually keep on hand um, lace that I've dyed, whether it be avocado dyeing, um, coffee dyeing, or whatever else I might dye it with. So I, I get that out. Um, there's some other scraps of jewelry. These are some um, little embellishments here. 
Um, this tin here has got cut pieces of doilies in it, so I'll bring that out. I have um, various colours of cheesecloth, so I'll put those there. And here is just some other strips of laces, so they'll go there. And then it's to decide what I'm going to do on the front. Um, sometimes, as I, I'm not sure if I said, sometimes I'll choose to go with the pinky tones, uh, sort of the more of the avocado colours, and other times with the. I think this is one I've done with my walnut. So today I'm thinking that I might use the um, more brownie tones. So. I'm thinking maybe I might use that somewhere on the front, like that. Or maybe this one. I quite like that too. Um, Place that somewhere that. there. And then... Um, it needs some pieces around. It's my iron making a funny noise in the background. Um, this was off a, a wedding dress that I purchased at the op shop and I think I might use a piece of that and I'll just fiddle around with it until I find it looks pleasing on the um, you know the layout and then I'll trim it to where I want it to be um, it could go there like that or it could it's just really a matter of placing things until you are happy with them I don't want that piece there so I'll cut that off um, I think probably something like that so then I would just cut that around around there like that and just set that roughly there somewhere like that um, and often things will have cut out pieces like this and I try and utilize um, fit things into those cut out pieces so I think I really want that to go that way so I might do that here. Okay, okay. Hmm. I don't know, I'll decide on that. And then um, it obviously needs something here. So I'll probably sit that on there like that somehow. I'm going to put a flower here too so that doesn't really need to fit um, that perfectly there. So then I'll probably just cut that like that, that there. And then it needs something in there. fiddle around till I find something that sort of would look okay and um, and I, I stretch things quite a bit you know like pull them out and make them fit the hole okay um, I changed my mind about the little embellishment on the front. I, it wasn't really working for me and I've decided to go with this here. Um, it goes right along the length of the front. So I'm going to cut this. It's something that um, is in a big piece. 
and I'm just going to cut the end off here. I've dyed this so that will go there. Now I've also realised that I um, jumped the gun a little bit in the beginning. I haven't sewed around the full length of my um, layers so I will I do that. Mention in the beginning I was uh, new to tutorials <laughs> and um, I've jumped the gun a little bit. I realised that I hadn't actually sewn around the four layers of fabric so um, I'm going to do that now. Um, meet Alna who is my trusty vintage I guess she would be vintage sewing machine. Um, she's well over 30 years old and she has served me well and um, I just love her. So I'm going to just sew around these four layers of fabric and I don't think you really need to see me do that. So I'll just switch this okay, off. Okay, I'm back. I've sewn around that now and um, pressed it. You can see it's not perfect, but that's the way it is with this look. So there we are. We've got that ready to go now to um, put the fabrics, the um, lace and embellishments on. So, um, yes, I jumped the gun before and got onto that before I'd, anyway, here we go, I'm going to lay them out again, um, and I'll just pin them a little bit, to make things easier. no um, set rules with this which is good. I think that's why I enjoy it so much. So there we are. Now what else did I have on there? I think I had a piece of that under there. Somewhere like that. And um, something else wasn't there like that. What's that? Just check whether I'm in frame. Yes. I'm going to put that there like that anyway. And then I wanted that somewhere. I think. Do I? There we go. You can see there's a lot of. Um, indecision here but it's that's half the fun of it it's just placing things and I'll just press that and um, seeing where they look most pleasing that is really all there is about it it's just um, moving things around to see where you think that they look the best and I'm going to put that there now, um, what I think adds to the shabby look is just here and there I will poke a bit of um, muslin out from the seams. And I think that's one of the tricks of um, the shabby look. So in this case I want to use this colour and I'll just Roughly cut a piece of that off, very roughly, poke it in under something, probably under there. Coming up the side. Out there, fray it, pin 
in there, put a big nail on it. I'll cut that off. Don't waste it. It can go somewhere else. Stick it over here. Stick it under there. Yes, I think that that really is one of the little tricks, I think, is just to do that. So I'm going to sew these on now. I um, will bring trusty Alna. I'm not really set up perfectly well here for tutorials, as you can see. So there's a bit of to an intro. So I'll bring trusty Alna back. There she goes and start sewing here. Check whether I'm in frame and I think I am. Now this is just there's no um, no pattern to this it's just sewing around them. So I start wherever I want to start and I usually use a zigzag and I just go Roughly around. I should have foiled my machine before I can't go on here. That's all I do. Roughly sew around the shape, not right on the edge, just in from the edge. On to the next one. Make sure you don't leave any edges um, on sewing. Get that bit of um, just checking if you can see me. Um, so, I'm not going to work at all. I mean, there's no, you don't have to be a, um, an expert by any means to do this. It's just, that's what I like about it, it's very, um, free really, it's just, go for it. Hello, I'm back again. Um, as you can see, the sun has come around here now and the conditions aren't ideal for filming, there's quite a, um, a shadow, but I did want to try and get this finished today, so I've gone ahead and done some of it, and I'll just show you. Uh, along the way I realised, um, because I was concentrating so hard on what I was doing, I had forgotten to put the Velcro on. So. Um, I've started to do that. I've got the two pieces here and and then there'll just be another two pieces go here. Um, I've put this piece of, this is just a continuous piece of lace here. It's off a wedding dress that I um, purchased and dyed the lace. And on the back I've started to collage all the pieces that um, I want to use on the back. But Yes, it's very hard for you to see that, I know. Hello, I'm back with my almost completed project. Um, I've sewn the Velcro on so that it now seals. Um, I've sewn the back, the collage um, center of the back there. Um, as I was trying to explain to you before, try and sort of well, what I do anyway, is try and sort of fit the pieces a little bit like a jigsaw, I guess. If there's a rounded shape here on 
the fabric um, sort of fit a doily into it, a piece of a doily or something like that. So it all fits together a bit like a jigsaw. Um, I try and avoid harsh edges. This was a bit straight and harsh here so I've just added a little very fine lace um, braid there that I've sort of swept around to soften it. Try and keep the edges soft. I think that's what adds to the um, the appeal as well. So um, that edge there I'm looking at and not really liking that much so I may put a little strip of um, lace there just along there like that or something. Um, what I could have done was just put um, cheesecloth there to soften that but I haven't. Oh, I'll have to fix that up too. Um, just fray your cheesecloth too, That's make it tat really tattered. Um, what I'm going to do now is sew up the sides. Um, just stitch that down there, all the raw edges show. Um, I had something I wanted to put on the back, where is that? In my um, craft box uh, basket here I had found just something that was in there from, oh where is it? I can't find it now. Um, just it was something I had stamped at one stage and um, never used. Here it goes here. And I think I'll just sew that Maybe I can put that there just to cover that um, edge that I was looking at that I thought was a little bit harsh. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll put that there. Remember that something incredibly wonderful is always possible. And you see that was just something that at some stage I had done and not used. Just thrown it in that basket and um, then you can use them. So that will go there. And because I've already stitched that on, I will just glue that. That will just be glued with um, my fabric glue, which is this one. I really love this. It's great glue. And then um, I will put the flower there, and that will be glued as well. And that will be the project completed. So um, you probably won't need to see me again. That, that'll be it. All done. So you see it really is simple and I hope this has been helpful and um, I'll be back to see you soon. Bye.